You're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin. And I love having our next guest on the show. Always puts me in a good mood and always teaches us something. He is the Chief Amazement Officer at Shepherd Presentations, customer service and customer experience expert. He's also a New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestselling author and friend of the show, friend of mine, even though I've never met him in person, Shep Hyken. <laughs> Welcome back to America Trends. Great to be seen again, Mary. Great to see you. I can call you friend, right? I think we've, I feel like we, we go way back now, Shep. At this, at this point, when I see you in person, I'm probably going to hug you because I feel like I've known you for so long. Well, I should hope so. And now, how are you doing? How's, how are things with you? Oh, man, it's a beautiful day here in St. Louis, Missouri, where I live. Uh, that's what I can tell you. Things are going fantastic. How about you? Okay, good. They're going great. We are busy as ever out here in Loft 100 Studios. And um, I want to dive right into a topic that's on my mind a lot is, is how um, people can be the best manager they can be. Being a good manager is something that is very... Uh, I feel like it's very tricky and I feel like, you know, some people are either born with the automatic skills to be a good manager, but I also think skills can be learned. And um, I want to hear, you know, your tips on reaching your full potential, because I know you talk about customer service and yes. the customer experience, but it goes back to a good manager. How do they treat their employees and get the most of their employees to have a good customer experience? Do you, do you think that as well? Yeah, I mean, let's talk about it. Let's, uh, first of all, it takes, uh, if you're gonna hire somebody to be a manager, you need to hire the right person. Some people are cut out for it, some people aren't, some people wanna do it, some people don't. So what we suggest doing is if you've had good and bad managers in the past, do a behavioral style assessment. You know, like a simple, a, a disc assessment, or uh, it's like Myers-Briggs, some people know what that is, but basically you're asking a bunch of questions, determining the right personality, and then say, who are my rock stars that I had? And maybe a half a dozen of those, set them aside. Who are the ones that I absolutely made the biggest hiring mistake ever? <laughs> Put those aside. And then look at the behavioral styles. And then when you hire somebody new, see if they align with one or the other. It's not going to guarantee that you're going to get the right person, but it's going to give you a shot at it. Now, you, the next thing do you have is specific that questions? need to... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I, do you have yeah. specific questions in the hiring practices? Because I know there's the standard questions we always ask, but is there something that um, a business owner could do to put to the top of their list when they're, when they're looking and hiring oh, at sure. a skill level or a skill set mm -hmm maybe, or questions to ask in the hiring process to really get at that managerial skill set? Yeah, well, it depends on the type of company that you're, you're going to be working with. So let's take something real simple like a grocery store, all right? I love one of the techniques that Hy-Vee, which is a regional chain, but they're very, very large, uses when they're getting ready to hire an assistant manager or a manager. They will ask the person, the candidate, to come in 15 minutes early walk around the store and be prepared to talk about what they see, what they learn, what they uh. would suggest doing. It's really cool. And then you kind of hear what the observations are. If you're hiring somebody for, say, customer service, you might want to ask them, what's your definition of good customer service? That's a great one because there's a million right answers and a couple of wrong ones too. Right. Uh, so, but you get the conversation started and say, how would you make sure that happens? If you were managing a group of people, what would you do to keep that alive, keep it in front of mind, that type of thing? So there's a number of questions. You know, when it comes to hiring managers, a lot of times companies want to hire from within. And I want to caution the danger. Let's just talk sales for a moment. I know so many companies that have taken their best salesperson and turned them into a sales manager. And they absolutely stink at sales management. Uh. <laughs> But they were great at sales. So be very careful. You don't pull somebody away from what their great talent is to put them into a role where they're just going to be just OK. Mm, that's a really good point. And so you were saying going back to, you know, getting your buckets of people, you've got your A1 salespeople, you're, you know, oh, they're decent. And then, oh, maybe this was a big mistake hiring them. So what do you do when you have those three buckets of people kind of in your mind? Well, I mean, if you've got somebody that's a, a mistake, they say, you know, hire slow, fire fast. That's an old expression. Uh, I would like to say give the, the person a chance. Coach them, mentor them. See if there's anything in there that they can salvage 
and, and make work for them because oftentimes it's just a matter of getting comfortable. Uh, I've seen companies hire some rock stars, but they come in and they're not a good cultural fit until they're coached to the cultural fit and they're brought into alignment with what the company's about. Uh, it's, it's often where a new person's brought in from the outside and isn't as familiar with the culture. I love to give the manager a chance and say, look, you're hired as a manager, but I need you to work a week on the floor. I need you to be a regular employee for just a little while mm. to experience what they're going through and give them a chance to experience what the typical employee is uh, going through before you ask them to manage that person they've never met or never worked with and they've never been in a company with them before for that matter. Yeah, that's a great tip. I I'm gonna jump ahead to a trending topic since we are America Trends. Something that's on everyone's thoughts right now is something called Chat GPT. I love Chat GPT. Okay, I haven't <laughs> dove into it yet, but I'm hearing all about it. I'm reading all about it, uh, hearing kind of some freaky things about it. But I would like to know, you know, how do you see, is there a potential that we can utilize Chat GPT for good customer service and and help the oh, experience yeah. for good? 100% uh, on top of it. First of all, Chat GPT, for those that don't know what it is, it's essentially, it's like going to Google and being able to talk to it like it's a person. You ask a question, it gives you answers. I'm not sure about that answer, tell me more. Or you can drop in a clause of a contract that's very complicated and say, and, and you type in, explain this to me like I'm a sixth grader. It, it, it comes back with a completely different explanation. There's so many different ways to use it. But in the world of customer service and experience, I've been working with a client recently where they're creating a solution that sits on top of the chat GPT platform, but it's focused just on service. Hmm. And what the company that uses this solution would do is to take all their products and all the questions and problems and complaints they've ever had and create articles like just like a regular knowledge base article that you would find if you went in and typed a question and it came back with a list of articles we see this quite often yeah. in software but instead of getting an article back it would give you an answer back based on those articles wow. and let me take it to the most simplistic world i have about uh, this one document that has 900 customer service articles that i've written for my weekly blogs over the last 900 weeks or yeah what that is right and I actually dumped that entire block of content into this engine. And then I started asking questions. Do you have the five ways to manage a complaint? Uh, tell me about the ways to build a customer service culture. And it came back with all the answers based on just my content, not what else is out on the internet, but oh. just my content. So look at like Nike has 150 different types of shoes. Mm -hmm. For each shoe, they probably have a great uh, base of information, all kinds of, I don't know, specs about the shoes, sure. and questions people have about the shoes and the answers. And for each shoe, they drop it in. So somebody might say, I just bought some Air Jordans and the sole seems to be coming apart. Is this a problem that others are experiencing? And it's gonna go into its own knowledge base and come back with the correct answer. And huh. that's the way companies are gonna start to use this. Now, by the way, it will not replace people. You will get a first start with the chat GPT or any other digital solution. But if there's a real problem, it needs to be seamlessly taken to a human so that person can go mano a mano and build a relationship with uh, the customer so that they feel that there's a connection to the, uh, to the company and that customer loves the brand as a result. So it's essentially a building out of what exists kind of already in a lot of websites that I've gone to, which is a chat bot that if, you know, how do I return this? Is this still eligible for a return? Or how yeah. do I use this makeup product or whatever? It's, you know, whatever it might be, it didn't arrive yet. Um, it's, it's that, but, but, you know, on steroids, <laughs> you kind of- it's, It that, is on steroids. Yeah. And you can talk to it like it's a person. And if you don't understand it, you can say, explain this to me like I'm a five-year-old and it will. <laughs> wow, okay. And then what I love about, you know, these chat bots on websites, they do sometimes, there's so many limitations so far, not now after they, if they implement chat GPT, but I want to be able to say, I want to talk to a person like you just said you know i want i don't want it so hard i, I don't mind starting with the robot <laughs> but sometimes if I, they're not getting it or i'm not getting it i just want to i want a button to say you know i've learned in phone trees now usually i can say customer service 
and it'll take me there. I've learned that hack. But with online chatbots, I want that option there too. I agree 100%. There needs to be an easy and seamless way to go from digital to human. And I can actually see the chatbot saying, oh, I'm so sorry you didn't like my answer. Let me get you to a human that might be able to help you. It will actually do that. It With a smiley face. Or it'll have a sad face emoji, too. I mean, I'm exactly. seeing some of these things that's really pretty freaky what's out there. Um, so I love chatting with you, Shep. Thank you so much. I hope you'll come back soon. I, I always, always love to come back. You just let me know and I will be there. Okay, wonderful. You're uh, listening to Shep Hyken at hyken.com. Chief Amazement Officer, he helps you grow your customer service and customer experience. Shep Hyken, or hyken.com, and we are America Trends, and we will be right back after this quick break.